right, y'all already know the vibes. When you're in the entertainment industry and you pass on, one or two things either happen to you. One, you have someone trying to make a dollar off of your name. And two, the family fights over your estate. But in this case, Anne Heche may have both because there may be a tell-all book coming by January of 2023 and her family seems to be fighting over who's going to be controlling the dollars. So sit back, relax, and let's unpack on Rondell's Unpopular Opinion, honey. You're now listening to The Unpopular Opinion, the art you owe with your girl, Rondell, bringing you the latest on news, politics, entertainment, and more. Like, share, and tap in. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the channel. Now, you may be hearing Anne Heche's name in the mainstream media yet again, and the reason why you may be hearing it is because now we are starting to see her final works actually come into fruition. And the Daily Mail recently reported that Anne Heche's memoir will be hitting the shelves in January of 2023. And as you can see here, this is the cover of the memoir that will be released in January. And not only does she have this memoir being released in January, this weekend on September the 18th, this Sunday, her Lifetime movie will be airing and it is titled Girl in Room 13. Make sure y'all check that out. It is gonna be a Lifetime exclusive and it is Anne Heche's final film before her untimely demise. And we're gonna get a little bit more into that film in a synopsis later on in this video. But according to Daily Mail, they posted an article today stating that Anne Heche's memoir is titled Call Me Anne and it is scheduled for a release in January after being revealed today, which is Friday. The book will cover her Hollywood career as well as her relationship with comedian Ellen DeGeneres and her friendships with people like Harrison Ford and Alec Baldwin. Now, what makes this so salacious is that this book will be giving details on the inside scoop of the relationship with Ellen. And y'all already know that Anne Heche and Ellen DeGeneres were very, very public in the early 90s, which was definitely unheard of in the Hollywood space. Now, the book publisher, Jared Weisfield, and this is the book publisher for Call Me Anne, said that he signed a deal with Anne back in May of this year and that she had turned in a manuscript shortly before she had died. And in this book, she's gonna be speaking about how Harrison Ford was a mentor to her. She also will be including stories about Alec Baldwin in here, Ivan Redman, Oliver Stone, and many others. But again, y'all already know that the relationship details with Ellen is going to be the part that everybody is going to want to tune into. And Anne Heche had actually mentioned that she was writing a memoir during a podcast episode earlier this year, which she promised that some of the truths about her and Ellen would be revealed in the book. And Anne pretty much stated in this book that I was labeled outrageous because I fell in love with a woman and I had never been with a woman before I dated Ellen. I did not personally identify as lesbian. I simply fell in love. It was, to be clear, as odd to me as anyone else. There were no words to describe how I felt. Gay didn't feel right and neither did straight. Alien might be the best fit, I sometimes thought. Now, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I have covered Anne Heche on my channel before. You can go back and watch my lives on her. But I'm gonna be honest and very transparent. I don't know how she's gonna speak about Ellen in this book as far as the connotation, whether it's negative or positive. But I'm gonna take a wild guess and state that a lot of this may be negative when she starts speaking or if she starts speaking of the breakup. Now, I'm gonna play a clip of her podcast episode of what she was stating prior to her demise, her untimely demise. But before we get to that, we have to remember what the New York Post actually covered around the time of Anne's passing. And they basically have brought up old podcast episode quotes on Anne Heche speaking about Ellen and how that relationship basically changed her life forever. And this is basically what she was telling Page Six back in 2020 and stated that the stigma attached to the relationship was so bad that she did not get a studio picture for 
10 years and she was also fired from a $10 million picture deal. Now the New York Post article went on to state that a 2021 podcast interview that she did, she described Ellen DeGeneres as a money hungry bitch who may have sabotaged her career in the wake of their split. And she stated, quote, I broke up with her because her goal was to have a lot of money. Mine was to find love and hers was, I want $60 billion. And Ann H said, good, good luck. Our forks are never gonna meet. Now again, homophobia was running rampant in the mid 1990s. And Ann H had found herself pretty much blacklisted from the industry. And she was stating that she had had a project where she had to go to a premiere and the name of the project was Volcano. And they had explained to her, they meeting her team and her management team, they had stated to her that Ellen should not go to this premiere with her. However, being the fact that Ann was in love with Ellen, she took her anyway. And she stated, I was told if I took Ellen, I would lose my Fox contract. I took Ellen to the premiere anyway, and I was ushered out by security before the movie even ended. And I was told I was not allowed to go to my own after party for fear that pictures would get out of me with a woman. But let's take a listen to what she said in a podcast where questions was asked to kind of really set the record straight. I'm not here to do any uh, Ellen bashing. I am here to speak the truth about a time that happened that's important to know. Okay. Did you ever try to reach out and make peace with Ellen? You know, every day of my life with her was reaching out to her to make peace. I, I, I think it was a very difficult thing for her to trust that I was a woman who could fall in love with a woman without being gay. And I think that was a lot to process. So I tried to make that process as simple as possible by quitting Hollywood, moving to Ojai, growing gardens, starting to write and direct, which I did with her and Sharon Stone, a, a movie of all things called Misconception. And, um, and nothing, nothing would satisfy her, her, her um, soul. Rumors Ellen was far from nice were out there for years. What was your reaction to the toxic workplace controversy? I felt that it was uh, in the hands of the people who needed to speak their truth. I hadn't spoken to Ellen in years and I feel that the stories that need to be listened to are being told. Did the stuff about her being emotionally abusive to her staff ring true to you? Emotionally abusive is a container for our actions that we've not healed. And unfortunately, the abusive environment was something that I understood. When did you know you needed to break things off with Ellen? I think it was a slow roll when you come to understand the truth of another. I wanted desperately to have that relationship uh, be the love of my life. That was my Cinderella story. What happened was that I was through the circumstances shut out from things that I cared about and in order to make her feel that she was being loved I would erase those things from my past such as acting and replace them with things that I thought would give her a foundation as we got further and further away from me being able to be in public the way that would please I began getting further and further away from my friends and my friendships. And one of the things that concerned me very much was that I was beginning to feel shut off and shut down and shut away. And if this answers the question, and I told Ellen that I needed to have friends, she said she did not want to have a girlfriend that needed that. And that is the day I left. You stood by Ellen at such a tough time. After everything, do you wish you'd never supported her? I wish I supported her bigger, stronger, better, greater. I was given an opportunity to speak on the on the steps in Washington at the, at the, uh, at the Gay March on Washington and stand up for what I believe is our right to love without gender. And this is something that I wished that I could continue to say for the last 20 years by her side on her arm. And I realized that she did not believe the same. 
man listen now y'all tell me what y'all think about that but y'all know how this thing goes when you have a troubled childhood the one like Anne Hayes has had and when you end up in a tumultuous relationship that honestly definitely does indeed do more damage and I do believe in my opinion that this was a very tumultuous relationship I do believe that Anne was definitely much so blacklisted I found it very crazy that Ellen DeGeneres kind of really went off to the top and Anne Hayes pretty much was blacklisted I guess because she didn't want to play the Hollywood game y'all already know how that go but we're gonna see what Anne Hayes has to say further in this book and Anne definitely does indeed come off as someone who was intelligent who was well spoken and I'm pretty sure she's gonna be when she speaks about this and I pretty much believe that she's definitely indeed gonna be candid about these other people in the Hollywood industry y'all gotta remember that Anne Hayes was probably the first one to come out against Harvey Weinstein and pretty much kind of really put the nail in his career coffin so look for this book to definitely much indeed be interesting all right now the daily mail also dropped another exclusive today about Anne Hayes pretty much speaking about the fight over her estate and they state that this is an exclusive saying that they have the emails from Anne Hayes to her ex James Tupper from 2011 and in her final wishes in that email she stated that he was to be named the executor of her estate and now we have James battling over control for it with her 20 year old son now the email that the Daily Mail obtained was included in Tupper's legal filing as he battles Anne Hayes' son Homer who was 20 years old for the estate and as many of you already know Anne Hayes was a mother and she does have two sons Atlas and Homer and the sad case about this entire thing is that Homer stated that his mother who died last month in August did not leave behind a will now Tupper is also saying this he claims that in his filing that Anne Hayes' email from January 25th of 2011 makes it very clear that all of the assets that she has were to go to him. And y'all know your girl got the email, right? Now this email reads, and we're gonna read it out now, and it states that it is indeed a will. And in the email it states, Kevin and Mel, FYI, in case I die tomorrow and anyone asks, my wishes are that all of my assets go to the control of Mr. James Tupper to be used to raise my children and then given to the children. They will be divided among our children currently, Homer and Atlas, and their portion given to each when they are at the age of 25. When the last child turns 25, any house or other properties owned may be sold and the money divided equally among our children. If all of my family, James Howard Tupper, Atlas Hayes Tupper, and Homer Hayes LaFoon die together, my assets will go to Elliot Bergman, my nephew, to be divided among my nieces and nephews equally. Thank you so much. May this go into records as my word until further papers are drawn up. Thanks so much, Anne Hayes. Yikes. Now, James Tupper is pretty much stating that Homer is not suitable to run the estate because he is too young, he is unemployed, and was estranged from his mother at the time of her death so the plot definitely does indeed thicken and the daily mail went on to state that the actor goes on to accuse homer who is the son of a real estate broker of changing the locks on the apartment and he shared with atlas allegedly preventing the younger brother from getting his belongings now according to tupper he stated that the two brothers homer and atlas have not have contact since and passed and homer pretty much hit back against james claiming that the actor is keeping him away from his brother Atlas by controlling his brother's phone and Atlas is 13 years old. So these two brothers do have separate fathers and James is the father of Atlas and Homer is actually the son to Coleman LaFoon who is a real estate broker. So according to James, Homer fixed this up to his liking real nice, all right? Now Homer's attorneys told TMZ that they are confident that the oldest son, which is him, will be the winner in court after it appointed him temporarily in charge of the estate on Thursday, September the 15th. 
And here are the documents right here from the Superior Court of the state of California. And in the filing, Homer lists his mother's personal property and her annual income as unknown. He is also asking the court to be named as a legal guardian of his brother Atlas. The court will dig into Ann Hatch's finances to determine the value of the estate and what property she owned. And in 2021, according to Daily Mail, it was reported that she was selling her LA Silver Lake cottage for around $2 million with co-star and ex-partner Thomas Jane. And it was also previously reported that she owned another home in the Hancock Park, Wilshire area of LA, and that mansion was priced around $4 million. Yikes. Man, listen, y'all already know how this thing go, and y'all know money or not, when loved ones pass on, and when they go home to glory, it get real messy when it comes to the money, when it comes to dividing assets, you really start to see people's true colors and who they really are, okay? I don't know how this one is gonna end up. Y'all let me know down in the comments because I would love to know y'all opinions, but I highly doubt in my opinion that they're gonna basically turn over guardianship over to Homer when it pertains to having Atlas, his younger brother, be living with him and he be the primary custodian of Atlas I honestly don't really see that happening. Homer could be doing this because he really don't vibe with James and he could be doing this to really honestly spite James. And I'm gonna be honest, James may have the upper hand in this, but this, in my opinion, is definitely gonna get nasty. I don't know if Homer pretty much wants all the proceeds that are gonna go to the estate when this book comes out, because this book is definitely gonna indeed going to sell. And not only is this book gonna sell, remember we also have the Lifetime event that will be airing on Sunday, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna get ratings due to the fact of, again, you're worth more when you are deceased than you are alive, and people are gonna wanna see and Haitia's final film. This film is gonna be speaking about sex trafficking. And honestly, to me, it definitely does indeed have an interesting plot. Y'all already know that Anne Haitia was a rebel against the industry. Again, like I said, she was one of the first people to really come out on Harvey Weinstein and him being pretty much a creep. So this is gonna be an interesting story to see on film and I'm pretty sure that Lifetime is gonna get some ratings behind it. So I don't know whether or not Homer is just one of these kids who are kind of really spoil you, who may not wanna work. Maybe Anne Haish was estranged from Homer because he probably didn't wanna do anything with his life, allegedly, I'm just saying I don't know, outside looking in, but me being a mom, y'all know how it go, right? When you kind of really spoil the kids and him being growing up with the mom with assets, sometimes the kids do indeed get comfortable and they really honestly don't want to push themselves. This could be, I'm not saying that it is, but it could be the, the case with Homer. Now, when it comes to Ellen, like she just better brace herself because over the past, I'm going to say two years, she's been taking a lot of L's and she already done lost her deal with HBO Max. So she definitely lost the bag with that. And she just better pray to the good Lord above, which we know she probably gonna do that. But she just better hope and pray that Anne Hayes don't say anything reckless in her final words in this memoir. But let me know how y'all think this is all gonna play out. Drop down in the comments and let me know because I'm very interested to converse with y'all and find out what y'all definitely are thinking, okay? Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for all new videos and live streams, and more importantly, like this video to get it out into the YouTube algorithm, all right? Share it and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. I love y'all. Y'all notice. Y'all take care and y'all be well. Peace.